I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Praxis Lately on my channel, you might be noticing I'm doing a lot of uh, building videos. I've been working on a chicken coop in the back, retaining walls, things like that. Uh, and in this video, what I want to talk about is uh, more state of the world stuff and you know, what I'm thinking in terms of uh, you know, preparing for you know, the next six months or so. I don't tend to do a lot of this type of thing here on my channel. A um, couple of reasons. One is that uh, I tend to like to keep my mouth shut about things unless I feel like I have uh, something to say uh, about them. And also, I think there's a lot of YouTubers out there that do like kind of the daily video updates on, you know, what's going on in the world. And they do it really, really well. So I don't feel like, it, you know, there's any more uh, voices needed in that, in that choir. Uh, but uh, that doesn't mean that's not stuff that I'm thinking about. I am thinking about that type of thing constantly. And in this video, I wanted to talk just a little bit about kind of where I am in terms of what I'm prepping for for the next six months or so uh, to, you know, get ready for things that are looking like they're going to be manifesting and... Um, yeah, you know, just wanted to kind of catch you guys up. I, I know a, a lot of you guys have uh, have told me this that uh, if practice starts actually talking about something on this channel, it's probably going to happen because I, I know a lot of um, uh, you know prepping and preparedness channels uh, they'll talk about like you know lots and lots of different things and you know the, the likelihood of them happening is you know, you know maybe some are high, some are low. I don't tend to like to talk about things on my channel unless I think there's a pretty darn uh, good chance that they're gonna going to actually uh, transpire. So uh, what am I uh, looking at right now? Well, I'm still looking uh, at the situation with the, uh, I'm not sure what are the taboo words here on YouTube, the WAR uh, going on over in, uh, in Europe. Oh, this is a little new development here. We had a fight with our chickens. We've got uh, two roosters, one small uh, rooster, one big rooster, and uh, they just got to about a year old and they finally decided that they wanted to fight with each other. The little guys in here, he got kind of ripped up, so we're keeping them separated. I don't know if we're ever going to be able to have them together with each other again. Maybe if we get some more hens, we will. But uh, at the moment, I, I, don't, I don't know if that's going to happen. So he's kind of, he's being protected in there. Um, so, you know, I'm looking at uh, the developments of what's going on there. If you guys have watched my channel, uh, you know that uh, we've gotten fairly prepared for, you know, the potentials of what might happen there. Like back, right back over here. Uh, here is our, uh, our root cellar, uh, which is now turned into our fallout shelter. Uh, I was an early adopter of the idea that a nuclear uh, exchange might be something that could possibly happen. And uh, I wanted to have uh, some ability to be uh, able to cope with that. So we uh, set up the fallout shelter over here. Incidentally, this is the retaining wall I've been working on. Uh, it, it just only go about halfway and uh, I've been working uh, using a tractor to put all the rest of these bricks in and they're going to go right up to the... Uh, uh, the chicken coop right over here. Uh, so I'm still looking at that and uh, kind of focusing on uh, you know where I see that going and I think things are really going to intensify over the next several weeks um, you know certainly over the next several months and uh, what I'm kind of preparing for for that isn't isn't to be ready to run into my fallout shelter. I mean you know we've got action plans and we're ready to do that kind of thing but that's not something that I'm actively thinking is going to be happening over the next several weeks or several months. What I am thinking about is that I think that it's going to start becoming obvious that uh, the rosy picture that has been painted on the media um, by uh, you know a lot of people with, with vested interests is maybe not the most accurate um, view of the world. And as that starts to become apparent to people, I think that people are going to start reacting to, uh, to the situation in the way that preppers like to try to avoid reacting to things. You know, preppers, we like to uh, plan for things ahead of time, do it in kind of a, like a cool, calm, collected kind of way. Uh, and for people who aren't prepared and a situation starts arising, uh, you know, they don't act in that cool, calm, collected way. They act, you know, frenetically like, you know, crazy because uh, things are, uh, you know, just exploding in a way that, you know, they hadn't anticipated and they hadn't uh, made any uh, preparations for. So uh, I'm, that's the thing that I'm kind of focused on over the next several weeks, the next several months, is that I think at some point it's going to become obvious to people that 
uh, the reality that they had been presented, the reality that they had been promised is not actually what the reality is. And once that uh, hits home with people, uh, they're going to start reacting to that. And uh, what is that going to look like? Well, it's going to look like runs on stores, you know, in terms of people stocking up on things. Uh, if you think that's crazy, uh, all you need to do is look here in the United States. Every single time we have a, <laughs> a hurricane, people act like, you know, running around like crazy, you know, buying the bread and the milk. Uh, so they never could have possibly foreseen that there'd ever be a, a hurricane or even a winter storm or something like that. You know, even for little things like that that are like, a hundred percent likely to happen and happen all the time people don't prepare for them and when they uh, you know arise people start acting kind of crazy Here, here's another example Christmas it's pretty predictable it's it, it seems like it happens damn near every year that Christmas occurs and uh, you know at the end of the year there's always like the runs where people are fighting over toys and stuff like that and that's something that's like a hundred percent predictable there's you know there's gonna be Christmas like every December 25th it's not like that one like, uh, you know, sneaks up on you or, you know, you were promised it wasn't going to happen this year. Uh, but, but still, people don't prepare for it and then they, you know, they get violent and, and whatnot. So, so that's what I'm preparing for right now is the, uh, the idea that the rest of the world is going to catch up to, you know, where I have been for, you know, two years, I guess, well, almost two years at this point. Uh, in, and I know very, uh, many of you guys have been. And that's what I want to... Uh, be ready for so you know as stores are having issues with getting cleaned out of stuff i want to just be out of that that, that whole thing you know preppers always get blamed for all the shortages when uh, things run dry preppers are the last person that you would want to blame because we were stocking up on stuff when it was totally plentiful and we're able to just kind of step out of the equation when uh uh you know when it it, it stops being plentiful so i, I yeah, I, I know the logic of that is lost on most people, but uh, that, that's the, the capability that we build up for ourselves is that if you get the stuff ahead of time, you don't have to contribute to all those shortages and you don't have to compete with all those people that are contributing to the shortages that are blaming you for creating the shortages. So um, that's the big thing that I'm getting ready for is, uh, you know, making sure my pantry is stocked up, making sure that if I, you know, if there are tools and things like that that I, you know, I might need, I like having backups of things, you know, spares of different things. So uh, if uh, there's a potential that a tool that I have might, uh, you know, fail, or you know, like drill bits for drills, uh, you, you drill bits are always breaking. Uh, you know, whenever you're using them, you know, you, you're going to be busting drill bits. So I always like to have backups of things like that. So think through, you know, all the types of things that if you were without it, you wouldn't want to be without it. You know, whether that's food tools or whatever and if it's the kind of thing that a lot of other people might be going after uh, you know make sure that you have that stuff and do it now because it's easy to get that stuff now you're not contributing to the shortages uh, you know later on so you know even though we never get credit for uh, uh, helping to prevent all the shortages that we get blamed for you know we can still do our best to try to you know uh, make them better for everyone else because you know the more people that are preppers the better it is for everybody else in the world because uh, when you have a large number of people and they're all, all competing for a small number of things, uh, uh, that's really difficult. And the, the, the more you can chip away at that large number of people number and make it so that it's a smaller number of people by having some people at least be prepared, uh, that makes it better for everybody. Uh, and uh, additionally, it makes it better for uh, you know, preppers as well because you know, the fewer unprepared neighbors that we have around us, you know, the better things are for us. It's never good to have desperate neighbors, you know, uh, especially if they have kids. So, uh, so that's what I'm looking at. Uh, you know, I, at some point, here's the fallout shelter right over here. At some point, you know, we might be going into something like that. Uh, you know, I don't know whether that's likely or inevitable or what that is. Uh, but um, at the moment, I think that what is likely and what is inevitable is the idea that people are very soon going to start getting wise to things, not wise, <laughs> are, are going to uh, start realizing things and, um, and you know, it would be best for us to be completely ready for that when that, uh, that ends up occurring. That's it. Uh, if you wanted to know more about, uh, you know, the building projects that we're doing here, uh, you know, like this really lovely retaining wall over here or the chicken coop that we're building back over there. I've got my whole uh, video series about uh, all the building that I do here at the homestead. Uh, it's a super unpopular video series. In fact, th th this is li literally true. Uh, once I, I, I kind of took a break. These chickens. 
these chickens, they just, it's awful. You don't know what it's like trying to make videos here with these guys. <laughs> you know, for this kind of thing, I'm just letting them crow in the background, but if I want something that's like clean, right, let's just get away from them. Um, this is literally true. Uh, I, uh, I was releasing this video series for a while, and I think between it and me kind of talking my mouth off about things, uh, uh, you know, related to COVID, that all ended up being true in the end. But between those two things, my channel really got, uh, you know, crushed, you know, because nobody cared about building this house and all this kind of stuff. And uh, you know, the powers that be weren't interested in hearing, uh, you know, my thoughts on, uh, you know, what, what the COVID situation was going to turn into. And again, everything that I said ended up coming true. So it didn't matter whether it was true or not. It was just, you know, it was unpopular at the time. Um, but uh, yeah, the video series about building this place is super unpopular, but um, I took a bit of a break from releasing those videos, uh, you know, because it was, it was unpopular and the camera that I used for it, uh, you know, had some technical issues. Uh, and when I finally got back to it, uh, 102 people unsubscribed from my channel <laughs> once I started releasing videos about, uh, you know, building a homestead. It's um, baffling to me that... Uh, that someone would subscribe to my channel in the first place, subscribe to a prepping and preparedness channel, and then and then unsubscribe immediately once they realize that on that channel, the guy talks about like building a homestead and <laughs> I don't. It was, it was literally that day I started uh, re-releasing re uh, episodes again, and and that day, uh, and the following day, it was two days. Uh, it was like 60 people the first day and. Uh, yeah, 42, I guess, people uh, the next day with 102 people immediately unsubscribed as soon as they found out. It's like, oh, damn, we're going to talk about real stuff and how to do things on this channel. So um, if you're interested in that series, though, um, there, there's a link. Uh, I'll put the link pop up here. You can uh, check it out. It goes over every single day building this place from it was taking this place from raw forest, just this, this forest to uh, you know, building all this stuff. So we do it day by day and we cover everything. And I even have a bunch of playlists about, um, you know, how just about building the fallout shelter, just about, uh, you know, building the greenhouses, just about doing this, just about doing that. If you want to uh, have kind of a topic specific thing. And I'm going to wrap up this video with one of the things that we cover in that, which is this, uh, this firewood shed over here. What's exciting about this is that I just finished filling it yesterday. Finally, it took a while. I think it holds somewhere between five and six cords of wood. So this is, we're good for three years or so with this thing. Uh, but we just finished filling it up right up to the front there. We still got some logs left. These are all logs that are just left over from uh, clearing the site. But uh, it's a nice feeling. It's like uh, money in the bank. Literally, I mean, well, not literally, figuratively money in the bank. If I were going to pay someone to fill that place up, it's not that much to heat your house with wood. It's actually pretty economical. But if I was going to pay for... Uh, you know, six cords of firewood. It's like about 250 a cord or so. So two cords is 500. So it's like uh, what is that? Three thousand dollars. Three thousand dollars. So you know, just by uh, getting free exercise, uh, you know, chopping and, and splitting wood, I uh, I got a uh, thousand dollars. I got paid to exercise. All right, that's it. It's early morning. Got to go in and make breakfast for my boy. Uh, but that's what I'm thinking about right now. People are gonna get uh, a get aware, uh, I think, in the near future about what's uh, what's happening, what's coming, and it'd be best to make sure that you've got all your T's dotted and, and cross all of your I's ahead of that. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hey, YouTube preppers. If you're serious about watching that video series about building my homestead, here's a link to it.